So about a year ago today, I did a video showcasing my Sigma SD1 Merrill, and I thought it's due time to go over it again, but we're gonna do a comparison as well. So I have my Sony a7R2 along with the old Merrill, and we're gonna do a little comparison, not super scientific, because I think that's gonna ruin the essence and fun of the video, but we're just gonna compare the two files, see how they render the color, and because they're so close in megapixels allegedly, we'll get into that. We're gonna see how much detail the SD Merrill can produce compared to my A7R2. Five, four, three, two, one, All right, let me start by saying it feels great to hold the SD1 Merrill again. I've used many cameras since this video and I still have to say this is probably the most comfortable camera that I've picked up thus far. Now today we're in just small town Wisconsin. The colors are starting to change. So I thought it would be a good time to pick up the Merrill again because now we can actually compare the color philosophy and the pixels between this and a modern high resolution sensor. So we'll break down the images side by side later on in the video, but for now I'm just getting my feet wet. And keep in mind, these first few images were used with auto white balance. As you can see, the SD1 here can render your images pretty violet unless you manually set it, which I prefer. I mean, it's something you can fix in post-production, but just keep that in mind. For this entire video, unless specified otherwise, all of these pictures are left unedited. And yeah, that's about it. Well, <laughs> to backpack what I just said, this specific set here is graded in post-production. I just wanted to show you how flexible the raw files are if you make any oopsies in your composition. And as you can see, the A7R2 and the SD1 come out with some very flexible files. So day two of data collecting, I have the Sigma SD1 here and the A7R2. Now, common denominators, we're using the same tripod, the exact same lens. And one thing's worth noting, I'm sorry for my camera optics purist here, uh, full frame A7R2. The lens is a full frame 12 to 24 SA mount lens, but the Sigma SD1 Merrill is technically a crop sensor. So to mitigate that crop, we're gonna have to zoom in a tiny bit with the lens for the A7R2. Sue me, ah, don't actually do that, please. But anyways, both the profiles are set to standard on each camera. We're using an aperture of F8, uh, ISO, the lowest it can be set to. But yes, without further ado, we're just gonna get a few shots. Again, it's cloudy, it's been rainy all week, but I, I wanted to get some content out. So we're gonna make the best of it. Okay, so we're back at the lab doing a super scientific study of the two cameras and the examples provided. Don't hate me because this video isn't meant to get the fanboys panties in a jumble. I just wanted to compare the two cameras out of my curiosity. Just be lighthearted with this because the results will vary from person to person and I didn't want to make it ultra scientific. I just wanted to see how the Sigma would hold up to a newer 
modern sensor. Not that the a7R2 is the newest camera on the market because there's gonna be like six or seven different other ones in the next couple weeks and I'm already behind on my new tech. Anyways, so if we look at the two, I have them pulled up on my computer, JPEGs, and as you can see here, on the left we have the Sigma and it's gonna be on the left the entire time and on the right is the Sony. So. Looking at these two images, the Sony actually rendered the colors more true to real life. And again, it's just due to the auto white balance. That's not to say you can't flex or bend the Sigmas in post-production to make it look similar to the Sony's. But this is why I generally like to set my white balance on the SD-1. And overall detail looks great on both. Now here's the Sony's in full resolution. As you can see, it withholds a lot of detail. Now let's do the same thing with the Sigma. Now, although the auto violet balance here seems a tad off, I do like the look of this image. The colors just seem to blend well to my eye. And if we talk about color science, again, this is very subjective and it could be different from person to person. But to me, this looks like a very high resolution sensor. Okay, moving forward. Now the next test, I paid attention to the white balance. And again, all these shots were set ISO 100, aperture F8 on a tripod. I tried to line up the composition as much as I can, but being that the Sony is a full frame sensor and the SD-1 is a crop, the comp's gonna be a tiny bit off. I try to mitigate it, but it is what it is. I'm a human. So it's standard picture profiles of both. Sigma's on the left, Sony's on the right. Now being at the scene, this was a cloudy day and I think the Sigma definitely looks more true to real life than the Sony. Now, let's zoom in on both side by side. What's apparent to me when we look at these images is that the Sony tends to render the images with a more punchy contrast and it naturally has more dynamic range than the SD-1. However, I think the Sigma here has a richer color depth and it just looks more pure and true to real life than the Sony does. To me, the Sony looks like it's more or less mimicking the colors, whereas the Sigma just simply is. We can see that they are still both very high resolution sensors. Now, if we get a similar composition, zooming into both very, very far. I don't know if you could tell from this YouTube video, but the Sony definitely has more detail than the Sigma does. When we're this neurotically close, which a lot of people aren't gonna be viewing your art two inches away unless they're Helen Keller or nearsighted, you can tell that the Sony just has more information when we get into the nooks and crannies than the SD-1 does. The range in the highlights and shadows on the Sony are just a bit deeper than the SD-1 where it seems it's a bit washed out and blown apart at this very tight angle. And if we look at the two, you can just see how much more clean the Sony is when it comes to its shadow and highlight rendering than the Sigma is. Sigma just seems a bit white. Now, zooming into a different part of the composition. Now, this is one that was interesting to me a bit because now, although the Sony appears to have more dynamic range than the Sigma, the Sigma just renders colors in a richer, more true to life way. And I'm sorry, you can play a drinking game if I keep saying richer. The tones of the copper leaves look more vibrant than the A7R2s. The A7R2 being a modern sensor compared to the nearly decade old SD-1. So in closing, my thoughts are they're both very good sensors, high resolution in their own rights, but the Sony definitely has more detail when we get into the nooks and crannies and the fine print of things. And that's due to a few reasons. One, the Sony is a full frame sensor and it's 40 megapixels are spread apart on one full frame, whereas the SD-1 has basically 15 megapixels crammed on a crop sensors or a few crop sensors that is and they're all having party in a 5x5 tool shed whereas sony's 42 megapixels are swimming in a sea of full frame goodness when it comes to overall imaging i think the sony a7r2 has more dynamic range and it's evident especially when we look at the skies you can see that the colors tend to roll off I think the tones on the Sigma SD-1 blend a lot nicer than the Sony's do. I think the A7R2 appears more artificial and 
punchy, at least in its color science. And Sony has improved on this over the years with a brand new color in their newer cameras. But when it comes to post-production and either camera, you can bend and mend them to your own liking. So to close out, they both come out with very stellar images. And this video isn't meant to say one's better than the other because it's just simply which one do you want to use or which one do you have? Now, although they both can be used for the same things, I really do think that the SD-1 can benefit for a landscape photographer or in a studio setting when you don't have to worry so much about ISO. I think the A7R 2 is just a little bit more well-rounded. Obviously, it's a newer camera, there's more features, and it's a hybrid shooter. And Sigma's a bit slower than the Sony's, but we're not going to really get into the overall hands-on performance type of stuff between the two cameras. They're just too different. But yes, that is it for this video. Stay tuned because I have a camera classic that you were a company and a brand and a pro flagship model. They probably never would have thought or thunk. That's it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for 1,000 plus subs. I wish I could buy a sub for every one of you, but I can't afford that. Look at the holes in my house. Look at that. Thank you. I will see you next time. I don't want to drop that paint.